Oh crap. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh I promise you didn't miss much, but I'll I can just step back quickly and summarize. So basically, uh uh, I, I started talking about uh, the fact that the, what the problem that we're looking at is right now commercial and institutional buildings and, and trying to apply um, law to segregation idea in, in uh, commercial and institutional buildings. Uh, and the difference between when we talk about commercial and institutional buildings versus residential buildings is that we typically have uh, trend data, building automation system data that provides contextual information about the uh, the energy consuming equipment so like pump states fan states um and even even when we talk about the, the flow of energy hot water for example we know the valve positions uh in every uh terminal unit in many buildings so I just want to make sure that uh still still cannot hear is that the case I think it's fine. I think that was okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so this is actually from an earlier work that we have done, uh, in which we were basically uh, trying to disaggregate very simple linear uh, regression model, and uh, we were just trying to figure out, you know, uh, different end uses, for example, um, you know, lighting and plug loads, trying trying to compare. Uh, lighting and plug loads uh, based from, from aggregated data. We're trying to figure out what the lighting and plug loads look like, how much air handling units fans are using individually. Um, and, and basically, uh, that, that also applies to heating systems where we have the bulk heating energy meter data and, and try to disaggregate uh, that to individual end users. Um, so and we did that because we had uh, submeter data to verify the accuracy. And, uh, yeah. and we moved on to some other, the next step, uh, which is basically uh, try to disaggregate and try to figure out like how many submeters do we actually need in buildings to, to figure out, uh, the, the, uh, to enable the segregation. So as, as previous uh, presenters indicated, as you have more devices to disaggregate, the accuracy of disaggregation starts diminishing. So in, in, in this problem, we looked at, you know, if you have uh, more submeters in, in a building, obviously the, the uh, disaggregate. Uh, so if you have more submeters, meaning that you have less devices to disaggregate under each submeter, uh, the, the disaggregation accuracy diminishes. And, and we studied that, um, to both simulation simulation data, also real world data, because uh, we have a living lab facility at Carlton where we monitor basically everything, uh, it, uh, like it, to, to the individual perimeter heater level. So through that analysis, we were able to, you know, analyze, analyze uh, the, the normalized room uh, mean squared error, uh, basically of disaggregated energy use if you have, if you increase the number of submeters, if you have more submeters, and that, 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 that does actually tail off, uh, the accuracy tails off. And, and ultimately, the, the purpose of this analysis, and we're still going on in this direction, was uh, to inform uh, building code changes in the future, because right now there is nothing in the Canadian building code that tells building owners that they need to install X many heating meters. And heating, is the greatest and you, uh, energy and use in Canada, uh, in Canada uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, so, but so this is actual previous work, uh, but that actually brings us to another pro, uh, realization that there are many buildings in Canada, many commercial buildings with, with no uh, archived historical building automation system data. They don't have the practice of collecting trend data. And they're like small commercial bu buildings and so on. Makes it very difficult to apply that uh, idea of disaggregation by looking at building automation system trend data. So in this case, uh, um, what we have done is that we looked at um, disaggregating um, uh, uh, energy uses 
by using time series decomposition. So, um, and uh, again, this is work done by my PhD student. I'll probably butcher what she has done, but you know, I'll, I'll try my best to explain what she has done. Um, so basically, uh, she basically, uh, the, the general idea is that the, the whole signal goes into a, a, a time series decomposition model. And that model is, um, don't ask me why, it's multiplicative. She tried many different versions of it and it turns out multiplicative model uh, yields the best performance. So it's a multiplicative model. It has, uh, you know, a multiplied seasonal uh, behavior the trend behavior, uh, as well as residuals. So that, that actually is, once it's actually separated, it goes into different uh, models. And, 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 uh, and the general idea is that you're trying to detect the, the seasonal switchover, because in the winter, you don't expect any significant, in the summer, you don't expect any significant heating energy use. Uh, whereas, um, you know, you expect, cooling energy use or dramatically increased cooling energy use in the summer. So you're just trying to figure out why the signal switchover is happening. So there is a change point detection taking place here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go through the, the math behind this, but, but ultimately uh, the, uh, she actually tested the, the, this time series decomposition approach in, uh, in uh, couple real buildings and tested the accuracy of it. And in both cases, to my surprise and to, to her surprise as well, I'm guessing, you're getting fairly, fairly good uh, accuracy in, in um, gaining insights into what these end users look like. So, for, uh, so we are able to uh, separate lighting and plug loads, heating and cooling uh, in a building uh, fairly accurately by using this time series decomposition approach, which doesn't require anything else but the but the load signal itself. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, another thing that that uh, and I just want to say this: this is actually uh, this project is done for uh, our National Research Council and. And they are developing, the, the intent of for them is that they're developing tools to help uh, federal government buildings. And there are many, many federal government buildings in Canada um, owned by TND and pub, uh, Department of National Defense and, and uh, you know, public works owned uh, buildings. So all these buildings, they don't necessarily even have adequate metering whatsoever. So the only thing that they have is basically hourly, um, historical energy use data. And we're trying our best to give them guidance on, on where they use their energy with that limited information available in hand. So one thing that uh, uh, Nargis also has done uh, is actually this little tool called, um, you know, an online tool that you simply upload, uh, I don't know why, the photo of the building. Uh, that's not necessary at all. Uh, and she uploads uh, the, the, you know, load data and uh, it just does the um, magic in the background and disaggregates. Um, and uh, yeah, this is actually one of the tools that we are developing for uh, for the uh, for these government uh, building operators. Um, and they it will it will be eventually merged into a dashboard that they have um, in their portfolio. Okay, so so right now um, uh, we did demonstrated this multiplicative time series decomposition model uh, with an accuracy of normalized uh, root mean squared error of twenty percent or less for two buildings, and um, and basically um, Naris has developed this uh, little web interface to 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 facilitate the use of this approach, and. Um, and we are hoping to refine this and uh, and uh, make sure that it's actually tested and functional for different building archetypes and, and climate zones, primarily climate zones valid in Canada, which is like cold to very cold range. Right? You know, uh, yeah. So that's that's about it. And I'll try to take 
uh, you know, I'll try my best to answer the questions if you have any. And, and if not, I also have Narius's email over there. Please feel free to send her an email. But, you know, uh, I welcome any questions if you have. Yeah. 